And welcome to the Veranda Financing Podcast. This is Christine Mills. I am so excited about this episode, partly because I feel like I'm going into a topic that a lot of podcasters aren't really discussing, and that is how to pitch your company for financing. Pitching your company is an ideal way to practice selling your company, perfecting your presentation or deck to raise funds for your company. I have included five easy ways to start pitching your company this year. That's right. After listening to this podcast, you will know what to do and how to do it and to successfully pitch your company. Number one, create a business plan. Creating a business plan allows you to focus on the purpose of your company, the need you are trying to meet, and learn your business story and know your financial projections thoroughly. Furthermore, Whoever you are pitching to will most likely request a copy of your business plan. So it's much easier to have it done so that you can present it along with your presentation. Creating a business plan, I find it was also helpful to help you focus on areas that you might not even be thinking about, such as your competitors, industry analysis and trends, and ways you should market your company. I was listening to a recent podcast, um, So Money, uh, with Farmoosh, and um, a young uh, an author was on there about startup financing, and she was saying that one way to reduce um, failure in a business, not saying that's foolproof, is to actually create a business plan. And she said that you know, if you aren't willing to just sit down and create a business plan, perhaps it's not the time for you to be in business. And I know there is a prevailing thought that you know business plans are not necessary and they're unnecessary, and you don't really have to have a business plan and I am pretty old school with that. I think it's important to sit down, crunch the numbers as hard as it may be, and figure out how is this business going to work. I find that it makes it easier for you to know exactly what you're going into. Of course, you're not going to know everything, but at least do your due diligence to see what you're going into initially, and then you'll have to build from there. But definitely, definitely, definitely work on a business plan before you pitch your company, especially these pitch competitions and to a banker. And especially in banks, um, a lot of loans, they want you to have a business plan. It's a requirement. If you need any help with it, I actually have templates on my website at verandafinancing.com. And you can have business plan templates that you could use to get started. I actually curated it based on different interests of creative printers. Number two, create a clean, impactful presentation. You know, now that you created your business plan is step one, it's much easier to create your presentation. You'll literally be transferring key information from your business plan into the presentation. So it's so much easier when you do it step by step. The key is to keep it very pithy. Don't overload your pitch book with data. You should have lots of pictures with key information. Um, that is very pertinent to the pitch because I find that it's so easy to just cut and paste um, the information that's in your business plan. But before you do it, think about the people who are watching or reading your business plan. They want to just jump to the points, the main points of each area. So think of that when you're creating it. Um, if you are raising funds, discuss ways you will use the funds and what you have accomplished thus far in your business. That's very important to know. Number three, know your numbers. And this has nothing to do with whether you're good in math in third grade or high school. This is something completely different. When you pitch your company, make sure your numbers make sense. Uh, Think about it. Your financial projections, are they too aggressive? Um, Did you say that your sales projections will increase by double digits? Did you provide solid reasons for your sales growth? Is there a way for the potential investor to recoup their investment? Uh, Do you have a clear growth strategy? When you look at your numbers, make sure that they really make sense, that you can answer investors' questions and that you don't have any major outliers and that your numbers may seem unrealistic or it may raise a red flag. So, for instance, if you're saying from year one to year two, there's a 400% growth that's really going to raise a red flag as of how do you anticipate that happening versus if you show that sales growth is modest year over year, um, that is realistic, especially when you could back it up with, you know, you may spend X amount of money in marketing, you may hire on this person, um, so forth. So that's those are ways that you go about doing your projections and to really know your numbers and to see where everybody else um, 
is in regards to um, the people in the industry and how they are faring and how much they're charging. So think about that. Number four, find the right people to pitch. Um, Pitch competitions occur very frequently and you have to find the ones that are best for your business and for you. Um, Local universities, organizations, conferences, incubators, and accelerators are all good places to start. If you want to start raising even more funding, you can also take it up a notch and go to the private equity. I know some people aren't for that, but that's an option as well. I created an ebook on my website, um, verandafinancing.com, where you could get a practical handbook uh, for entrepreneurs. And it's very helpful because I have a whole list of angel investors, um, accelerators, uh, like different people you can uh, uh, show your business plan and pitch to. Um, so that's very helpful to take a look at. It. It's called the Practical Handbook for Entrepreneurs. It's completely free. Just grab it at verandafinancing.com. I thought it'd be a good resource for you. And number five, practice. Practicing is so important as in anything else. Presenting is a skill that you can improve over time. Don't give up if the first presentation does not go as planned and that you didn't receive the results you needed. Pitching is a numbers game. And the more I'm in business, the more I hear that so often. It's a numbers game. It really is. And the more people you present to, the more likely you will gain success. So I just want you to be mindful of that and be encouraged that if you pitch to one person and they say no, don't think that you have a bad idea. If you pitch to 500 people, then you might want to think twice. But do the numbers, do the due diligence. And just to go back over again, number one, create a business plan. Number two, create clean, impactful presentation. Number three, know your numbers. Number four, find the right people to pitch to. And also number five, practice, practice, practice. Uh, Thanks for joining me today. Again, I'm Christine Mills from the Veranda Financing Podcast. I would love for you to just leave a review. Um, It'll be so important to me and also helpful to let people know about this podcast. I strive to give you all the resources that are very helpful for you to grow your business and finance it the right way. Um, If you'd like to learn any more information about Veranda Financing, check out www.verandafinancing.com. You can also go on Instagram. I'm very active on that, uh, Veranda Financing, as well as LinkedIn at Veranda Financing. Take care and God bless.